Okay, so here we are getting ready to push back. Um, what we're going to do is, uh, we've got the APU going on here, so we're going to select our seatbelt sign on, turn our hydraulic 3A pump to on, zoom in a little bit on that for you, and then our uh, hydraulic 1 and 2 pumps to on. That is a company procedure to have these on. Some leave them in auto. Uh, we do that because it was a recommendation from Embraer for single engine taxiing to have those pumps on. Uh, this ensures that there's no uh, transition or loss of uh, pressure, um, and it also doesn't rely on the automatic logic of the system, which is quite intricate, and if we were going to do a type rating course, we could get into that. But the automatic logic in the uh, aircraft, in the simulator, does match what we have in the real aircraft, and that was a uh, painstaking process done by the, the guys over at Field there, so kudos to them. It's a lot of work. Um, anyways, we've got some switches out of the 12 o'clock position now. Uh, at this point, we would run our before start to the line checklist, after we arm those uh, auto brakes to RTO. Um, so the two-line checklist would cover our briefings, uh, ensuring our ramp fuel matches what's on the release, um, and uh, getting the seatbelt signs and all that ready to go. So now we'll see that our cabin crew have let us know that they're ready for, uh, for taxi. The aircraft is secure. We come down to the pedestal, lock that cabin door, you hear the clicks, and uh, that lets you know that it's all secured up. Red beacon light comes on. Sterile sign is going to come on. It's going to give you that chime there. And uh, our transponder goes to out on. Uh, now we're ready for the before start below the line check. Uh, so we verify sterile signs on, doors and windows are closed and locked. But shoulder harness is on, cell phones go off, and red beacon is on. And we're ready for push. Uh, so we're going to release the brake after we pull, push out to the GPU. Always make sure you deselect that. Um, that way when they plug the ground power unit in, it's not immediately demanding electricity. Uh, in the rain, that can, uh, that can arc and that can uh, cause some, some unfortunate uh, situations for some guys outside the aircraft and we need to do that. So we're going to start our push, just get ourselves off the gate, the brakes release, and here we go. Um, talk a quick bit about what we've got going on here with our uh, displays. Uh, so we're in the status page on the captain side of the aircraft to verify that we've got PSI from the APU bleed to the engines, um, our hydraulic accumulators are uh, pressurized and our uh, brake temps are not doing anything wild. We're not allowed to take off with those brake temps in the amber uh, indication area, so uh, we'll, we'll check that during our taxi check. Now the startup sequence of the aircraft is extremely easy. Uh, what we're going to do is call for engine start. We're going to start number one first. Uh, you can start number two first if you want to, depending on which way you're uh, turning the aircraft. That's one of the benefits of putting these pumps to on. Since both pumps are on, all of our wheel brakes and our nose wheel steering is being uh, being activated. Complete that uh, push back and set the brake. So we're going to select this uh, start selector, start stop selector to run and then start. Start your timer for your starter duty limit cycles. We could get into all that interesting intricacy stuff if we wanted to do a type rating course here, but uh, I don't think that's quite necessary. Now that low hum noise you hear in the start is uh, pretty consistent with first flight of the day or the aircraft's been sitting for a while. Um, it, it really does do that. It's a pretty cool noise for a small uh, small engine. So the uh, ITT comes up around 20% into fuel flow starts. ITT is going to come up and your red line is going to recycle uh, out of the starter protection. Uh, so that's a good stable start on number one. Then uh, we'll stop the timer and reset it. Now, it's pretty regular for regional airlines in the U.S. Uh, to use single engine taxi the aircraft. Uh, we're not going to do that because it's a lot of uh, a lot of effort in a sim. It's a lot easier in a real aircraft to single engine taxi than it is in a simulator. So we're just going to start that bad boy right up. So starting number two. Now we're taking a look here at our N2, which is coming up at a four and a half five percent. It's pretty quick. Uh, right around 20 to 22 percent, that fuel flow is going to come on. And um, and it will uh, kick some fuel in there and start it up. So it's an incredibly automated process. We're just managing and watching it. And uh, if it's going to go hot or if something goes wrong, then we can immediately turn the start and stop selector to stop. And that takes care of all of our problems there. Then one comes up to its uh, original selection. And uh, we're looking good to go. Now we can run our after start flow, make sure that switch is guarded. After start flow, we're going to set our flaps down to two. Take a look over at our FO side. I go full right rudder, full left rudder. We're going to check the tops, right, and down, up. 
Now, if we were single engine taxiing, I would leave the hydraulic pumps in the on position, but because we got them both on, we can flip them back to auto and the auto logic will take over. And the APU can come down. And that is the after start flow. Every once in a while, uh, the aircraft will show uh, YD off. That's That does happen in the real airplane. Uh, it's an electrical airplane. Weird things happen in this airplane. We're also going to select our trim 3.6 degrees nose up and turn that yaw damper on. Alright, at this point we would be ready for taxi. Um, what we're also going to do is start a two minute timer uh, after we start both engines up to ensure we have a two minute warm up period on the engines. That's a manufacturer recommendation. It's not necessary in the sim, but if you want to add a layer of realism, it won't take off prior to two minutes. And we'll actually have to manage that for single engine taxis or short taxis at smaller airports. We'll get into taxi takeoff for the next video uh, and uh, go from there.